Hi everybody, it's your AP Biology teacher, Mr. Poser, and today we are going to be wrapping up our fifth unit on heredity by discussing topic 5.6, which is on chromosomal inheritance. Now, we have been studying this whole unit about how chromosomes are inherited, uh, studying how the chromosomes are inherited and how that provides an understanding of how genes are transmitted from parent to offspring, and we've talked about how genetic variation in population occurs. That's really the study of Genetics, right, is determining how do traits get passed on from one generation to the next, and how does it produce genetic variation. So we could talk about independent assortment, we could talk about segregation of chromosomes, we could talk about crossing over, random fertilization, all that stuff to talk about uh, genetic variation. And we, we discussed genetics and the chromo, uh, well, Punnett squares, we did all that. We talked about how chromosomes are inherited and how cer certain genes are linked. And, you know, we talked about X-linked. We talked about all sorts of different types of uh, inheritance. Um, but another thing that we can use genetics for is to learn about human genetic disorders. Um, and that's going to be the main focus of this video here is talking about human genetic disorders and how our understanding of genetics and in heredity, particularly how chromosomes are inherited, um, can end up causing some, some disorders and diseases. Um, that, things that we did not know about at all um, before studying genetics. You know, like people with these genetic disorders, they, they were deemed to be cursed or something like that by whomever. Uh, as a result of these disorders, but it's really once we understand the genetics of it, the science of it, uh, we can we can learn more about it and we can help these people. So uh, let's let's talk about this. Maybe you know what genetic disorder this is up here. This is an example of a genetic disorder. We'll we'll, we'll uh, look at it at the end of the video. All right. Uh, so let's t start talking about some genetic disorders that you may have heard of before: sickle cell anemia and cystic fibrosis. Excuse me. Sickle cell anemia and cystic fibrosis are both what we call autosomal recessive disorders, which means they're caused by a recessive allele um, that is on a, any chromosome that's not a sex chromosome. So uh, I'm not really sure which chromosomes these are, but it's not, it's 1 through 22. Okay? It's not the sex chromosomes. All right, sickle cell, uh, as you can see from this picture up here, these are blood cells, and some of the blood cells have kind of a weird shape, like this one right there. Oops or uh, some of these down here. They're supposed to be donut shaped, but sometimes they're like croissant shaped. Yeah, I think about bakery. Um, and that's caused by a mutation in a protein called keboglobin, which is responsible for carrying oxygen from one place to your next, uh, from one place to the next within your body. Really, really important uh, protein there. And it's caused by a mutation and it's autosomal recessive, right? So if you got two copies of this recessive allele, you will end up with sickle cell anemia. Um, cystic fibrosis, same kind of thing. It's a recessive autosomal disorder. If you get two copies of this allele, from one from mom, one from dad, then you will be affected with cystic fibrosis. And that's caused by a defective or a, uh, a protein with a mutation, chloride transport channel in plasma membranes of the cells. All right, so uh, think about that. Um, we, we looked at examples way back in unit two of what happens you know, when certain channels might not be able to open um, so cystic fibrosis is what happens when there's a mutation in the chloride transport channels in various cell membranes without the body, throughout the body. And this causes a lot of different uh, manifestations here, and we can list these off, but, you know, we're going to try to keep this video brief. All right, um, a couple what we call dominant autosomal uh, disorders. One is a deadly one. It's called Huntington's disease. It's uh, kind of like Alzheimer's a little bit. Um, except we are not 100% sure what causes Alzheimer's just yet, but we do know Huntington's disease. It's a degenerative uh, nervous system disorder. It's caused by a lethal dominant allele. All right, so if you get one copy of this allele, you know, it's a, it's, it's, it's a dominant allele, so it will result in uh, somebody having this mutation in, in one of these proteins and resulting in a neurodegenerative disorder that will... It's really sad. It will ultimately take the person's life um, as a result of that one dominant allele, right? Um, so another example of a dominant autosomal disorder is what we call achondroplasia, which is a type of dwarfism, um, and that's also caused by a dominant allele. While it's not lethal, um, it can still cause, you know, impairments to, I believe, to some kind of, uh, cartilage between bones or maybe the lack of cartilage um, in bones. Maybe the growth plates aren't working properly. Um, I don't know the 
particular physiology of it, but uh, yeah, I know it is caused by another dominant allele. So getting one copy of this kind of allele will result in dwarfism. All right, uh, moving on, we have another example of some autosomal disorders. It's called Tay-Sachs disease, and that's a disorder in which brain cells cannot produce an enzyme to metabolize lipids. Um, and that is caused by a recessive allele. But the thing about Tay-Sachs that makes it different from, say, sickle cell anemia or cystic fibrosis is that carriers of that allele produce less of the enzyme than those that are unaffected, right? So here's our, you know, regular old genetics, you know, Mendelian genetics uh, crosses between two heterozygotes. we got two carriers, mother and father. Um, their offspring each have, like, a one in four chance to be completely unaffected or to be affected. Um, but here's the thing, the affected individual is gonna, not going to be able to produce that enzyme at all. Um, but this is an example of co-dominance in that the uh, getting one copy of the recessive allele and a copy of the dominance allele, so being a heterozygote, will still cause you to produce less of that enzyme. All right, so this is an example of a classical example of co-dominance um, in that, you know, the dominant allele is being expressed, meaning that, you know, it's, that's the unaffected, that's the normal allele, and the mutated allele, the recessive allele, are uh, being expressed, okay? So that's an example of co-dominance. Uh, let's keep going here. We got a couple X-linked uh, genetic disorders. One is red-green color blindness and hemophilia. That's spelled improperly, hemophilia. So red-green color blindness, uh, it looks like this. Okay, if this is normal color vision, somebody who is red-green red, colorblind is going to see more of this, these colors. Um, so it's a, more of a distinction between just seeing red and green. Um, and it's more common in boys than it is in girls. Um, so we did a cross of uh, X-linked recessive traits way back in 5.3, I believe. Uh, maybe it was 5.2, one of those two videos. Um, but we did that Punnett square to show like, oh yeah, look, this XY is going to be more affected than, uh, than the women who, or the girls or the females that are going to have XX. All right. Um, and hemophilia is another example of an X-linked recessive disorder. Hemophilia is an inability to form blood clots. So you're missing particular proteins um, that allow for blood clots to form. So that means if you start bleeding, you've got a bloody nose and you're a hemophiliac, you're going to have a really, really hard time stopping that blood flow because your body does not have its ability to clot and form a, the scab or scar or anything like that, All right? So if I, you know, if I were to have a bloody nose right now, I could put pressure on it and I would, you know, it would stop bleeding, but that would not be the case for a hemophiliac. And that is an excellent recessive disorder, which again, is going to be more common in boys. Um, and another one, uh, is Duchenne muscular dystrophy. So uh, a pretty serious disorder. It's a, characterized by a progressive weakening of muscles and loss of coordination. Um, it's another X-linked recessive disorder. Um, so basically, again, more common in, in boys with that XY because all they need to do is inherit one of the, uh, well, they just need to inherit the X chromosome with that defective gene on it and then get a Y and that's it. Um, so Duchenne muscular dystrophy, all these boys have, have that. Um, it's basically, you know, their muscles get weaker and they lose coordination throughout their lives. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's not fun. It's not fun. It's, it's, it's pretty sad. Um, but yeah, it's another example of an X-linked recessive disorder, um, that we've been discussing. All right. Um, now for a little bit more about, uh, less about alleles and more about the chromosomes, um, one of the most well-known and well-studied uh, genetic disorders is what we call Down syndrome, which you have definitely probably heard of before. Um, it's caused by what we call an aneuploidy, which is an abnormal number of, of a particular chromosome. And to be specific, Down syndrome is caused by what we call trisomy 21. If we break apart this word, tri means three, somy refers to chromosomes or body, really, um, of 21. All right, so uh, somebody with Down syndrome is going to have three copies of chromosome 21. And how many are they supposed to have? They're only supposed to have two. Um, and how does that happen? Well, it occurs due to a non-disjunction when a pair of homologous chromosomes do not move apart properly. All right. Uh, so like here, this is an example of a non-disjunction right down here on the left. Uh, we got meiosis here. They're dividing. You know, we got homologous pairs. But then this homologous pair does not properly divide. 
Um, so then we end up with a what we call a trisomy right here in this cell, and then we have a monosomy, which means they have one chromosome, M-O-N-O-S-O-M-Y, -O -O um, in, uh, in this gamete over here. All right, same thing over here. If we, uh, if we don't have a, uh, if we have a non-disjunction even earlier in meiosis, okay, these two gametes are going to have trisomy, and these two gametes are going to have monosomy. All right, uh, so they could happen at either stage of meiosis and have different effects, or have different probabilities of uh, having the incorrect number of chromosomes in the gametes. All right, so here's trisomy 21. Uh, that's what that image was at the beginning. It was trisomy 21. You can clearly see that there, you know, there's a pair of each of these other uh, chromosomes in this karyotype, but in 21 there are three, which means that that's this person, who's ever karyotype it is, has Down syndrome. Um, and last thing I want to point out here is that aneuploid conditions can also involve sex chromosomes. Um, so somebody could be born with only one X chromosome or with two X's and a Y or with three X chromosomes, and those can cause a variety of different uh, phenotypes as a result. Okay, that is it for this unit. Uh, that wraps up Unit 5 on Heredity. Please let me know if you have any questions, and we will see you next time.